the Dofar Rebellion, commencing in 1962 and lasting for 14 years, it had been later known as the deadliest war Oman had ever faced, with a casualty total of more than 10,000. Following the Jebel Akhtar War, arising in 1954 and continuing until 1957, in which Imam Ghabel bin Ali attempted to defend the lands of Oman proper, or modern-day Oman, from Sultan Said bin Tamur, Sultan of Musket and Oman, who had aid from British forces. In response, the formation of the Communist Dafar Liberation Front, also known as the DLF, began. This had been a result of Muslim bin Nafil, a tribal leader, being discontented by the state of the Dofar region. Nafil had gained support from Saudi Arabia, whom had come into conflict with Oman in previous years after supporting revolts against the Omani government in the Jabal Akhtar region, as well as support from Imam Ghabil Ali, who had been exiled later on. The DLF had then made several attempts to corrupt Oman's economy and government, such as executing sabotage operations on oil industry vehicles and at British Air Base at Salala. At most of DLF's soldiers had either been former soldiers of SAF, the Sultan of Oman's Armed Forces, or the Trucial Oman Scouts in the United Arabs. They had the knowledge of crucial areas essential to the government and were highly skilled and trained for guerrilla warfare. The Dofar Force, a local unit only of about 60 men that the Sultan had relied on to establish order in the region, had soon gone to rebellious. They had attempted to assassinate the Sultan in April 1966, causing the Sultan to retire to his palace and had never been seen in public since. Though the British had advised elsewise, the Sultan had ordered and launched military offenses against the DLF, causing the destruction of villages and where wells in Dofar. In the year 1967, the Six-Day War, the establishment of the socialist state known as the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen, as well as the withdrawal of Britain from Eden, had given more of a revolutionary judgment throughout countries of the Arab League. It had boosted the supplies and artillery of rebels having new recruits from militant groups of the PDRY. May of 1968 had been when the Sultan's forces suffered defeat after attempting to vanquish rebel groups, though by this time, rebels had been organized and advancedly trained. In September of the same year, a subversive Marxist movement named Second Congress assigned a new name to itself, Popular Front for the Liberation of the Occupied Arabian Gulf, or the PFLOAG. They had gained patronage from China and South Yemen as China wanted Maoist influence in the area as well as it wanting to counteract Soviet impact of the areas of the Indian Ocean. The Soviet Union, along with China, soon supplied the PFLOAG with unconventional warfare training. Though the newly transformed DLF and PFLOAG became a powerful force, it caused division within those who fought for independence and those who were extreme revolutionaries. By 1969, Jebel Dafar, a rugged hill area in Dafar, had almost been entirely invaded by DLF and PFLOAG, and only a year later, the entire mountain range had been communist ruled. The communists used extreme terror in order to rule the area, forcing children into war training, separating families, pushing five tribal leaders off a cliff, and machine gunning the rest along with their children. So the Sultan's armed forces, on the other hand, lacked advanced weaponry and equipment, as well as proper training that were necessary for battle. Their weaponry included outdated machinery, such as simplistic bolt-action rifles used in World War I. In Northern Oman, other revolutionaries had formed guerrilla movement known as the National Democratic Front for the Liberation of Oman and the Arabian Gulf, or the NDFLOAG. The NDFLOAG had attacked SAF stations, which led the British to the idea that new leadership was needed in Oman. On July 23, 1970, Sultan Said bin Tamur had been overthrown in a coup that had practically been bloodless. As he went into exile in London, UK, his son Qaboos bin Said al Said took his place and initiated reforms beneficial to Oman's military, social, and educational systems. He wanted to pardon those who opposed his father politically, create a nationwide program to aid in the development of Oman, effectual military resistance against those who did not accept his offer of pardon, and end outdated Dofar used as the Sultan's personal province 
and the beginning of its official incorporation into Oman, used diplomatic measures in hopes of Oman being acknowledged as an Arab state with its own government and the prevention of the PDRY of receiving aid from other Arab states. Soldiers of the British Special Air Service were then flown into Oman only a short time within the coup to boost the Sultan's new campaign. They came up with about four strategies that aided the counterinsurgent campaign, providing medical supplies and attention, veterinary assistance, accumulating intelligence strategies, and the administration of hearts and mind campaign. Along with the Sultan's pardon of those who opposed his father came a cash motive which swayed many rebels to go back to the Sultan's side, including Muslim bin Nafil and Salim Mubarak, his deputy. The rebels who had gone to the Sultan's side formed Firkat, which were irregular units trained by the British. In 1971, the first serious step into restoring the Sultan's power had been Operation Jaguar, in which five Firka units and two SAS squadrons successfully fought against the rebels to attain territory on eastern Semhan, hoping that they could expand from there. The SAF created fortified lines that would prohibit the travel of rebels and the camels that were carrying their supplies. They finally came up with an effective line known as the Horn Beam Line that ran from Mugshail, which was on the southern coast of Oman. It consisted of heavily armed and skilled units near peaks that were connected to barbed wire. The rebels, however, came up with mines that were anti-personnel against SAF bases as well as anti-tank landmines. On April 17, 1972, the SAF squadrons made a landing by helicopter to maintain a post at Sarfate near PDRY territory. The capture did in fact decrease the amount of troops in eastern Jebel, but they had captured all of Sarfate within four years. China made relations with Iran, it withdrew its support of rebels, and slowly the rebels' local support from PDRY had been diminishing. On July 19, 1972, 250 rebels attacked 100 Firkat, though Firkat strike master aircrafts were available as well as helicopters to land SAF reinforcement that caused the rebels to suffer great losses. As part of his diplomatic reforms, Sultan Qaboos had gotten aid from Shah Muhammad Reza Balavi of Iran as the Shah sent 1,200 Iranian soldiers to help the SAF. In October 1975, the SAF launched its final attack and successfully reached Oman's southern coast. Over the next few months, the rebellion either surrendered or found refuge in the PDRY, and in January of the next year, the rebellion was officially declared to be defeated.